December 24th, 7.30 p.m. Contest venue, Scones Room. Whoa, a candy castle. And look, there are even some little elves to go with it. Rooms laid out, pretty much the same as Tangaroa's. It's not as cold though, that's something. Let's see. Yeah, looks like there's a temperature control panel in here too. Over there, where that orange light is, right? We better take a closer look at it when we can. It's like a fairy tale storybook in here. And this whipped cream covered construction must be the work of Miss Alicia Scone. Where is Miss Scone? Me? Why, I'm just over here, dearie. Oh, just look at you lovely boys. Delicia Scone, at your service. Some cheeky bladders back in Blighty even call me Miss Delicious. <laughs> call the lovely boy at 34. Unexpected to say the least. Lovely boys? Really? Even Mr. E? Oh, yes, dear. You, the detective over there, you're all lovely boys to me. I'm nobody's lovely boy, lady. Name's Bad. I wonder just how old she is. Finish this up so we can get out of here, Mr. Attorney. Yes, all right. What's the meaning of this? Chit-chatting with the defense? Mr. Edgeworth, some scary guy just stepped out of the castle. Von Karma. What? He's Manfred Von Karma? It's sorry, mannequins. Notorious prosecutor, Von Karma himself. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Von Karma. Gregory Edgeworth, attorney at law. <laughs> I couldn't care less what your name is. Your job is to lose to me and disappear, never to show your sniveling face again. What a thoroughly rude individual. Those piercing eyes, that furrowed brow, <laughs> you're even scarier than they say. And you might want to keep such rude thoughts to yourself, Eddie. We were hoping you might permit us to carry out some brief inquiries, Mr. Von Karma. Ha! Ah, and why would I wish to extend you any such courtesy? This clearly isn't going to be easy. So long as your inquiries are limited to this room, I suppose I'll allow it. Why the sudden change of heart? You! That tall fellow! Name's Bad. Is that so hard to remember? <laughs> I didn't ask for your opinion. The thoughts of a lowly detective do not concern me. But I do admire your spirit. Bad, see to it that these words, worms, don't step out of line. Why do I have to? I am not offering you a choice, detective. I need to go and look over Gusto's room. Good day. Great. More babysitting. Why aren't Detective Bat and Mr. Von Karma investigating together? They don't seem to know each other well enough for there to be bad blood between them. Well, looks like we have permission to investigate. Guess we better get to it. Indeed. I'm not sure I trust Mr. Von Karma's motives, but at least we can do that much. Hold up. I haven't been over this room yet either. You're not messing it up before I get my chance. You'll have to wait till I'm done. Huh? But I thought you were the lead detective. How come you didn't take a look at this room yet? Because I wasn't the first one they assigned. One of Von Karma's pets was on the job before me. Right up until just now, in fact. I got here not long before you did. That answers my question as to why they're working separately, I suppose. What say we look over the room to tether together? It worked out well enough before. And you won't have to worry about us messing things up. You can keep an eye on us as we go. What kind of screwball attorney has to have a detective breathing down his neck? <laughs> Guess I'm stuck with you for a little while longer. Yes! You're amazing, Mr. E! You have our thanks, Detective Bat. Don't be too grateful. This is my seat. The second you get in my way, you're out of here. Of course, we understand. Now, Shall we begin? Now we investigate. It's an incredible piece of work. 
hard to believe this whole castle was made out of sugar and cream. I know, right? It's like we're inside a magical medieval story or something. I didn't know you were so into such fantastical things. S sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Didn't mean to get so carried away there. Oh, no need to apologize. I admire your enthusiasm. I sometimes wish my own son was as animated as you. You have a son, Mr. E? I do. He's still in elementary school. And yet he'd rather read a statute book than a fairy tale. I can't help but worry that his interests will make it hard for him to make friends. Don't say that. He sounds super interesting. You'll make a ton of friends. Me included, I'm sure. <laughs> I'd like to think you'd be more of a big brother than than a friend, Eddie. <laughs> a big brother, huh? Guess I have some growing up to do. Better take this more seriously. Indeed. And with that in mind, shall we continue our investigation? I must scour the scene and inspect anything that catches my attention. The doors of the castle have been left wide open. Yeah, was the guy born in a barn? He could have at least closed them behind him. I'd like to see you say that to Mr. Von Karma's face, Ed. Wait, there's a bunch of stuff inside. Let's see. Hold it, kid. If anybody's gonna be handling evidence, it'll be me. Tch, cream's going all runny. It's all over the detective's shoes. Why are all these items being stored inside a candy castle? Alright, tell me what you want me to look at first. There's a bunch of blue cloth back there. One, two, three, four rolls all together. Well, they certainly aren't made of candy. No, no idea what this stuff is for. Almost looks like somebody hid it in here. And I think I've seen fabric of the same color somewhere else before. Two big rock crystals? Looks like somebody was using the castle for storage. Hmm, kinda expected something a little more exciting behind these doors. Oh, I know, maybe they're giant uncut gemstones. Maybe this whole thing's based on a story about a castle with a princess treasure hidden inside. I think I treat my priceless treasure with a little more care. Hmm? There's something on the bottom of them. Looks like a little stand or something. I was right. They are gemstones. The stands must be so they can be put on display. Well, whatever they are. It seems they're not just a large set of paperweights. Huh? These pillars. They have hexagonal indentations. Looks like something's supposed to go in there. Well, whatever they were, they're long gone. Hexagonal indentations, huh? I wonder. Castle's covered in whipped cream, so maybe a giant strawberry? A giant strawberry with a hexagonal bottom? Look, I like strawberries, okay? Can't blame a guy for wishing. I prefer bananas myself. Blueberries for me. Now let's connect it. The hexagonal indentations with the rock crystal shards. The rock crystal stands and the pillars in front of the castle feature the same hexagonal shape. I believe the crystals are meant to be placed on top of the pillars. Oh yeah, hexagon to hexagon. Makes perfect sense. But if that's the case, then why were they being hidden inside the castle? The rolls of blue cloth and the rock crystals inside the castle. I imagine both must belong to Miss Scone. Miss Scone, what were you using the items inside the castle for? Oh, those? S sorry, Lampkin, but I'm not allowed to say. Let me guess. Von Karma? Yeah, how did you know? Please, don't ask me to tell you. You'll have my guts for garters. It seems the prosecution really has no intention of sharing anything with the defense. Man, thought we were onto something with those giant rock crystals, but... What's that, dearie? You're interested in my little trinkets? Your trinkets? Yes, my sweet. I use them to make people all lovely and relaxed. You use rock crystals and cloths to do that? I do, I do. It's wonderful, you should see it. And they're not just any old rock crystals either. They're great big lumps of salt with lights inside them. Wow, those things are lamps? <laughs> oh, that's not even the half of it. Those cloths hold an even more exciting secret. She really opened up the moment we started talking about her trinkets. Since you're here, why don't I give you lovely boys a taste of my relaxation magic? Oh, Batty Bumpkin, 
Can you get it all out and set it up for me? The name is Bad. Is that a no? Why are you being so selfish, Batty Bumpkin? You, have you finished taking photos of this room yet? Yes, sir. We have, sir. Then help Miss Scone here with something, will you? Yes, sir. Right away, sir. <laughs> oh, you're a sweetie at heart, aren't you, Batty Bean? That's amazing, Miss Scone. You got him to do exactly what you wanted. That's some talent. Thank you ever so much, Battykins. And you, Officer Lovely. She's even giving nicknames to the forensic guys now. I guess it's her way of showing that she cares. So, what about this is supposed to be relaxing exactly? Oh, don't be a big sourpuss, Batty B. The fun's only just beginning. Officer Lovely, you can switch it on now. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Wow, it's beautiful. It is. I wish my son were here to see it. Isn't it, though? Isn't it just wonderful? The four adorable elves and the sweetest little castle made of sweets. That's my theme, you see. And I thought it would be extra lovely if it was all lit up. Isn't it the nicest thing you've ever seen? One of the elves must be feeling a little left out. This is how it was supposed to look for the contest. But I'm glad you lovely boys got to see it at least. Wait. Shouldn't the lamps be lit up too? Oh, I... What's happened there, I wonder? I think we better take a look at the lamps and the elves one more time. That's exactly what we're gonna do. I must scour the scene and inspect anything that catches my attention. The lamps appear to be broken. Bulbs are smashed. Both of them. Maybe they fell and broke on the floor. Look, there's a red stain on the one on the left. That's not just a stain. That's... Yep, it's blood, all right. I can smell it. What? Blood? Why is there blood on this lamp? Could it have something to do with why its bulb is broken? We'd better take a closer look at the other one, too. Before that, though... Bloody lamp, BFT. Blunt force trauma. We know that the victim was struck and killed with something blunt, and we found blood on one of the lamps which has a smashed bulb inside. Could the lamp not have been the murder weapon? For sure! It could definitely do enough damage to kill someone! You, science guy, did you finish analyzing the blood from the lamp yet? Yes, sir. Just got done a minute ago, sir. The blood is the victim's, no doubt about it. There you have it. Yep, we had an assault lamp. So the murder weapon was hidden in Miss Scone's room. I'm beginning to think we may need to add her to our list of suspects. So Miss Scone had actually intended to use these lamps in her display? Then why were they stashed inside the castle? Maybe because they're broken? Except, there's plenty of other places she could have put them. Best play to hide some salt in some, some sugar. Isn't that how it goes? Or perhaps the best place to hide a tree is in a forest. Anyway, if her intention was to put these salt lamps in her final display, that contradicts a certain piece of evidence in my possession. I'll need to point it out by making a deduction. Yup, correct. Could this be related to the evidence somehow? Yup, the contest rules! Eureka! Take a look at the list of rules for the contest, Detective. Non-confectionary items may not be used as decoration. That means the salt lamps and the luminous cloths would both have been against the rules. Is that why they were stashed away inside the castle? I think we need to dig a little further into this with Miss Scone before we can say it for sure. I agree. It's a cute little elf made of candy, and it's sitting on a little tree stump. The fabric above it and the other decorations around it really added the dreamlike atmosphere. Stare at it for too long and we might get swept up in the fantasy ourselves. Yeah, well our job's to stay right here in reality and get to the bottom of all this. Nobody's getting swept up in any flights of fancy on my watch. There's a small door on the wall here just like Mr. Tongaroa's room. Here, I'll open it. 
Hmm, temperature, 68 degrees. Light set to green? Didn't Gusto say cream needs to be kept at 50 degrees? Temperature in here is too high. That is odd. I wonder why. Hmm, runny cream, high temperature. The whipped cream in this room is collapsing because the temperature is too high. It's 68 degrees. My messed up shoes can vouch for that. And yet... When you open the doors of the castle, the handles themselves were just fine. Yeah, they were sturdier than expected. Sturdy? That's not the way I would describe most things made of confectionaries. I think we'd better take another look at those handles, don't you? What the? I think it's safe to say those handles aren't made of candy. It's not just the handles, the whole castle, the little elves. They're all just plastic miles with whipped cream smeared on top. What? So none of this is confectionery art after all? No, it's simply made to look like candy with the cream having been added to lend it into an all in air and authenticity. Now we complete the final two. Stone's rule breaking with fake confection. So not only did she use decorations that were against the rules, she didn't even make any real sweets. Miss Stone made a mockery of the rules. Yeah, guess she's not gonna get crowned world's greatest now. And why is it so warm in here? Do you think it's got something to do with all this? Maybe. That's a good question. I think we better go ask Miss Scone herself. Start talking. <sighs> What's the matter, Miss Scone? You seem a whole lot less cheerful than you were a minute ago. Is it Mr. Von Karma? Did something happen between you two? Why, yes. Nothing happened at all. Hmm, well, you just said yes. <laughs> Tee -hee, that was a hello yes, you silly boy. Aren't you just the sweetest little sugar dumpling? Remind me, what was your name again? Oh, uh, Eddie. Eddie Lumpkin. Oh, you'll go far, dearie, I can tell. Eddie Lumpkin? It seems our English gentlewoman has taken a liking to you, Eddie. No small accomplishment. She's not exactly what I picture when I think of a gentlewoman, Mr. E. Never mind that now. We should ask her a few questions while we can. Could you tell us about what you did over the course of the contest? Of course, dearie. Let's see. It all started at about 10 in the morning. That's when we set to work. And, well, I spent most of the time here in my room getting everything ready, as you'd expect. Ooh, and then there was a lovely afternoon tea for an hour or so from around 1, I think? Afternoon tea? It's an English tradition. A chance to drink tea, enjoy a snack, and make small talk. Uh, so, kind of like recess. I suppose you could say that. Ooh, you really know your onions, do, don't you, Greggy Pegleg? Such a clever boy. When did I become Greggy? And where was this afternoon tea served? Out in the garden, of course. There's a lovely little one just outside. They do it at the same hour every break time during the contest. Lay on a nice little spread, you know? But today, only me, Samson Silly Pants, and Moody Judy were there for it. Sammy Poople had already finished his big creation, so he was there the whole time. But poor old Chili Wings and Gusty Pants had him missed out because they hadn't finished yet. Bless them. You're saying everybody except Mr. Frost and Mr. Gusto were present? That's right, dear. To tell you the truth, I haven't finished yet. But I wasn't about to miss out on tea and cake served by our two TV superstars. I went right back to work when I finished, though. Tootled off while the others were still nattering away. And at any point during the contest, did you visit any of the other competitors' rooms? What? I... No, dear. Don't be silly. That's strange, because your fingerprints were found in Mr. Tongaroa's room. Damn! Caught red-handed. Wait, so you admit you were there? Oh, well, I can hardly deny it now, can I? But I didn't kill anybody, I swear. I suppose I better tell you what really happened. Just promise you'll believe me, won't you, dear? What exactly were you doing in Mr. Tongaroa's room? Well, I was... I suppose you call it research. Research? Sammy Poople's a dab hand when it comes to the old sweet making. Everybody knows that. 
So when I noticed there was no one in there, I just hopped in for a quick bit of research, like I say. What kind of research leaves fingerprints? Yes, that I... Well, it stands to reason I leave fingerprints, doesn't it? After all, it's hardly research if you don't have a little nibble now, is it? What? You ate little pieces of them? So, the traces of tampering in Mr. Tangaroa's room, that was all you? I... I'm ever so sorry, sweeties. I didn't mean to make a mess. I just... I had to take a little bite here and there, didn't I? I didn't want poor Sammy Poople getting upset, so it's just the teensiest bits and pieces. And the stand... And the stand holding up a ship. You took a bite out of that too, I suppose? Oh, yes, dear. Of course I did. It was you. You brought the whole thing crashing down. Yeah, I'm sorry, my lovely. Truly, I am. Hold on. Is that why you left the afternoon tea early? You were heading off for a second helping of sweets? I... Look, just please believe me. I never killed anybody. I promise. Her actions were clear, certainly suspicious. But that's about all we can say for now. Miss Scone, why is the temperature of your room set to 68 degrees? Because I hate the cold, don't I, dearie? And besides, being chilly's no good for a girl. If I want to keep my fresh face complexion, I've got to be careful about these things. We ladies have to stay young, don't you know? How old is she really, though? That's what I like to know. It's not polite to speculate on a person's age, Eddie. But most of your work is made out of whipped cream. And whipped cream needs to be kept at 50 degrees or it starts to deflate. Is that so, dearie? Well, silly me, eh? I've only got it made a whoopsie. Wait, she really didn't know that? Hmm. <laughs> World-class confectioner, my foot. Not only did she break the rules by using fake candy, she's ignorant of basic facts about her supposed craft. This scone grows more mysterious by the minute. Let's complete the last two. Confectionary research and lack of knowledge. Miss Scone appears to lack basic knowledge about how confectionery is created, and she says that she snuck into another entrance room for research purposes. Hardly the actions of a world-class confectioner competing for a major prize. Yeah, not how I picture a top pro acting. Does she maybe just lack a little confidence, or... Or is she not actually a confectioner at all? Perhaps she had another agenda altogether. After all, we only have her word for it that she went in that room to do some research. Wait, you mean, maybe she went in there to commit a murder? There's no way of saying so for certain just yet. But she is hiding something. That much I'm certain of. So what now? What else have I missed? This elf doesn't have an illuminated cloth over like the others. It's not fair to leave the poor guy out, Miss Scone. Well, I didn't want to, did I, dear? But one of my cloths and one of my little machines went missing. A cloth and what sort of machine exactly? Oh, you'll never guess how it all works. Those luminous cloths are connected to these little thingamajigs. They're called, um, full-spectrum light emitting devices. They send light down the main cable and into each optical fiber stand strand. That's what makes the cloth glow. With a little bit of fiddling, you can change the light to any color in the whole wide world. Bright red like ferocious fiery flames. Cold blue like plinking crystals of ice. They have these special batteries that last for donkey's years, and they don't mind the cold at all. Forgive me. So these machines, they... They're what makes the special luminous cloth light up in all these beautiful colors, Mr. E. I see. So much new technology. I can barely keep up. So these light emitting devices... You lost one of them and a piece of luminous cloth? That's right, Lambkin. Heaven only knows where they could have got to. This cloth, it could have something to do with the case. Yep. Investigation complete. That's enough investigating for now, don't you think? Yes, we've certainly found plenty of interest. Something's been bothering me for a while now. Mr. Von Karma would have surely found the murder weapon when he searched this room. And yet he didn't arrest Miss Scone. He didn't even seem interested in questioning her. I think our first priority should be to find out what he's really up to. Detective Bad, I have a few things I'd like to ask Mr. Von Karma. Me too. Him. 
and scone. Yay! How could you, Batty Bumpkin? S stop staring at me like that! It appears Detective Bat is just as suspicious of Mr. Von Karma and Miss Scone as I am. Miss Scone, would you be so kind as to accompany us? Of course, dear. Where are we off to? To find Mr. Von Karma. December 24th, 8.05 p.m. Contest venue, Fountain Room. Mr. Von Karma, we'd like to speak with you if that's all right. Judging by your faces, I'm guessing you found the murder weapon? We did. It was in Miss Scone's room. Which means that Mr. Tangaroa should no longer be the only person of interest. Ha! Nonsense! It doesn't matter where the weapon was found. Tangaroa is guilty. And as long as this is my case, guilty he shall remain. How can he be so sure of Mr. Tangaroa's guilt? You have an explanation, I assume, for why the murder weapon was in Miss Scone's room? <laughs> of course I do, and I'll be delighted to share it with you. Argument. The murder weapon. Tangaroa killed Frost with one of Stone's stalt lamps in order to frame her for the murder. To complete the deception, he took it back to her room once the deed was done. After all, if it had been found near the victim's body, Tangaroa would have seemed doubly suspicious. A body may be hard to move, but a murder weapon? Considerably less so. And that is why there was no piece of evidence on the scene that pointed to a particular suspect. So it's your assertion that Mr. Tangaroa took the salt lamp back to Miss Scone's room? It is indeed. But it is more than an assertion. It is a fact, based on my own investigation. You mean you have proof that he did so? <laughs> I don't need any such thing. What? If you have a rebuttal, I'll be happy to hear it. But I highly doubt you'll be able to fault my logic. Oh, we have a rebuttal, all right, and then some. Tangaroa killed Frost with one of Scone's salt lamps in order to frame her for the murder. To complete the deception, he took it back to her room once the deed was done. After all, if it had been found near the victim's body, Tangaroa would have seemed doubly suspicious. A body may be hard to move, but a murder weapon? Considerably less so. And that is why there was no piece of evidence of the on the scene that pointed to a particular suspect. You could present either the crime scene notes or voluminous blog. But I'm choosing these. Objection. Objection! It's true that the murder weapon and the bloodstained chocolate were removed from the scene of the crime. But something else remained that does point to one person in particular. Take another look at the photograph of the body, if you will. The cloth covering the victim's lower half. Is that not one of the same luminous cloths we found in Miss Scone's room? What's... What's that, dearie? One of my lovely colorful cloths? Have a scene of the crime, you say? <laughs> Luminous cloth. Nonsense. I see no light to speak of. I guess he doesn't know how it works. It may look like ordinary fabric at first glance, but attach one of those light-emitting devices, and the difference soon becomes apparent. Look at his face. I don't think he was expecting that. But the fact that the cloth can be lit up is neither here nor there. We have to show why it's important. One of the rolls of cloth from Miss Scone's room went missing. And if you look closely at the blue cloth in the picture, wouldn't you say it's clearly made of the same material, Mr. Von Karma? <laughs> the salt lamp and the luminous cloth both belong to Miss Scone. And seeing as the body was wrapped in scent cloth, surely even you have to admit that's suspicious. Mr. Von Karma. I think it's time to accept that a number of factors point to Miss Stone as a person of interest. Yeah. Braggy Paglet, how could you? You're accusing me, of all people? I'm not accusing you of anything just yet, but I do think you're hiding something. I, that's not... Just to clarify, your assertion is that both the murder weapon and the cloth were in Miss Scone's room prior to the murder? Exactly. Is something funny? Only that you've walked so carelessly into my trap. Neither the cloth nor the murder weapon were in fact in her room. 
So sorry to have to break it to you. What does he mean? Tangaro has spotted them before the contest began and noted that the lamps and cloths contravened the rules. He subsequently confiscated them and took them to his own room for safekeeping. What? Then, after the contest began, nobody saw Hyde nor Hair of Frost as he had secluded himself in his room. And the only person capable of entering his locked room was Tangaroa, possessing as he did the only key. And as you now know, he was also in possession of the lamp used to commit the murder. So you see. I have had everything I need to get Tangaroa convicted all along. Well, how does it feel? To have lost to me before even setting foot in a courtroom. Ugh, this can't be happening. W wait all our hard work was for nothing? Miss Scone! Why didn't you tell us your stuff was confiscated by Mr. Tangaroa? I... Well, dear, Mannequin said that if I spilled the beans, I end up being the one under suspicion. Mr. Von Karma said that? And he wasn't wrong now, was he? You two accused me yourselves just a second ago. Pathetic. Curse you, Von Karma. You led us to the murder weapon knowing we'd make certain assumptions as a result. One more thing, my pathetic friend. There are two, and only two sets of fingerprints on the murder weapon. Two? Yes, those of Delicia Scone and Samson Tangaroa. No others were found. Tangaroa used the lamp he had confiscated the murder frost, and was foolish enough to hide it in Scone's room without first removing his fingerprints. At this rate, no one will even need to testify. My perfect evidence will do all the talking for me as I secure his guilty verdict! Objection! But wait! What about the luminous cloth that was left behind in Mr. Tangaroa's room? Hmm. What about it? He probably meant to return it after disposing of the body. Ugh! I don't have enough to disprove any of what he's saying. No more pitiful objections. Then get out of my sight, and close the door behind you. Mr. E! I'm not about to just give up. <laughs> I see you mean to waste more of my time. Bad. Escort them off the premises. Now! Halt it! This investigation is not over yet. Detective Bad? What is the meaning of this? Sorry, but I'm not in the habit of leaving cases half solved. There's still... One last thing from the crime scene, we haven't identified. He's right. We still have the evidence of somebody's activities to account for. Hmm. <laughs> we can discuss your lingering doubts at our leisure, Detective. But whatever they might be, they're no business of a defense. Objection. I beg to differ. There's a piece of evidence I'm still not satisfied about either. And I suspect it might be the same thing that's bothering the Detective Bad. What? This is the yet unidentified something that was left in Mr. Tangaroa's room. The framed finger marks! There are finger marks on one of Mr. Tangaroa's creations. Supposing they belong to the murderer, it could certainly explain how their prints didn't end up on the murder weapon. How do you know so much about the crime scene? Because I let them look around. You let the defense examine the scene, bad? Are you out of your mind? I don't remember you telling me not to. Hmm, <laughs> insolent worm. You would do well to remember this then, detective. That the results of your next salary review is up to me. Oof. Detective Bad's in trouble now too. I'm sure glad you're my boss, Mr. Edgeworth. As long as you remember that the results of your salary review is up to your performance on this case. <laughs> A mere attorney uncovering such a fact based on a cursory investigation. I'm almost impressed. But it's entirely possible that those finger marks belong to Tangaroa. After all, he wore gloves while preparing his creation. Objection. But can you prove conclusively that the finger marks are his? Furthermore, there is still something about Miss Stone that doesn't add up. Is there? Or are you simply not prepared to admit defeat? Oh, stop it, Greggy. Stop it, stop it. Why are you being so mean to your poor old pal, Delicia? I own not the nibbling poor savvy poople sweeties. What more do you want? I don't want to have to make you a suspect. That much is certain. But you lied to us. 
and you're still not telling us everything. Raggy, stop it! Stop bullying me! I'm sorry, but you don't even know the temperature whipped cream should be kept at. What kind of professional confectioner doesn't know something as fundamental as that? I'm sorry, alright? I'm sorry I'm just a silly, muddle-headed girl! What more do you want me to say? I don't think you're muddle-headed at all. I think that you were never a confectioner in the first place. Enough! I'll thank you to keep your baseless accusations to yourself. Evidence is everything in a courtroom in case you've forgotten. If you're going to accuse a witness of perjury, then I demand that you present something to back it up. But this isn't the courtroom, is it? Nevertheless, what proof do I have that Miss Stone doesn't know the first thing about making desserts? The fake confections! Take that! Every single one of Miss Scone's creations break the rules of this contest. The offending items, the cloths and the lamps, were duly confiscated, as we have established. And the witness did not go and bring them back to her room herself. But those weren't the only rule-breaking items in her room. What? The entire fantastical world Miss Scone created? Every last bit of it? It's all just a collection of plastic models slathered in whipped cream. That cream is the only authentic confectionery in the room. No real-world title contender would ever stoop so low. Is this true, bad? Yep. Saw it with my own eyes. Stepped in it with my own shoes. Uh, did we finally convince him? With her lies exposed like this, surely he can't continue to deny the facts. Miss Scone, your actions place you firmly on our list of suspects. But, no dear, I, I'm no killer. Then why don't you finally start telling us the truth? Who are you really? And why were you tampering with your rival's work? <sighs> All right. The truth is, I'm not the adorable little cook you see before you. I'm actually a pharmacist, if you can believe it. A pharmacist? I can't blame him for being so surprised. This couldn't be further from what we'd imagined. So what's somebody in your line of work doing entering a contest like this one? Well, I I just love eating sweeties, if you must know. And Sammy Poople sweets are the best, or so they say. I just had to enter. I didn't mean to end up making it all the way to the final. Even Mr. Von Karma is lost for words. That's it? That's the only reason you're here? Yes, dearie. And it was worth it. Samson's Silly Pants Sweeties are the tastiest treats I ever did eat. And the finger marks. Were you the one wearing the gloves? Yeah. No, 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 no. That wasn't me, dear. I don't even wear gloves. Remember, Miss Scone's fingerprints were found elsewhere on Mr. Tangaroa's other creations. I'd say that points to her not having worn any gloves. Exactly, Lampkin. Greggy Pegleg's got the right end of the stick. I'm an innocent woman. Is your head filled with cream, too? Eh, sorry, mannequins. Her head may not be filled with cream, but she's certainly no master of subterfuge. Miss Scone, were Mr. Tangaroa's works the only ones you sampled? No, dear. I couldn't help myself. When I finished my afternoon tea, I tipped Dodo over the Chili Wings room for a little taste, too. You were in the victim's room, too? Yes, dear. Nobody was in there, you see. Quite possibly because the occupant was already dead. But I could only stomach one little bite. I never tasted anything so salty in all my life. So I had myself one of the tasty star-shaped bits off the side to cleanse my palate. You have quite the sweet tooth, don't you, Miss Scone? Indeed. What didn't she sample? That's everything. I promise. Greggy Peckles, mannequins. I'm so sorry. I didn't meant to make a mess of things. As long as what you've told us is the truth, that's all that matters in the end. Do not think for a second that this means I myself believe you. I'm going to investigate the victim's room now. We'll see how truthful you've really been after I'm through. Mr. Von Karma, please let us accompany you. I think it's only fair that we be allowed to investigate the veracity of our conclusions. <laughs> Accompany me if you like, but don't think for a second you'll be permitted to conduct your own investigation. We'd like to accompany you all the same. December 24th, 9pm, contest venue, Frost Room. What in the... 
What is the meaning of this? When we got to Frost's room, we saw nada. It was all gone. The whole enchilada. Was this the work of the culprit? A dead body hidden in a chocolate chest. A murder weapon moved mysteriously to another room. This case was a real peach, and it was going to take some serious sleuthing to get to the bottom of it all. And I believe that is it for now. Yeah, back to normal voice. I can't get enough doing this because Slizer does this with no commentary. I do it with commentary because after playing Ace Attorney for so long, you kind of get bored of it. And sometimes I like to add my own voice to the flair. I'm a one-man voice acting gig, you know? Anyway, that is it for this part of Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Gambit. We'll be continuing in the next part. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button. It means a lot. Please do not forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell, and I will see you then. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out. Product provided by Capcom.